action. Welcome to Rumi K Talks. And today, the episode number nine, film and relationship. Well, film and relationship can be tricky, as we all know. And the key is to find the right path toward it. But how do you do it? Well, we don't really know the answer uh, that will fit to everyone, but we have a certain practices that we develop that help us to find the right connection while Roman and I filming on a film set. Where do you even start? Well, first of all, you start in the pre-production or planning stage. And this is the most important thing. Because everything, everything starts in the pre-production stage. You have to plan for everything. So if you're working with your partner, it's important to establish the, uh, the rules before you go into production. So when you actually go into production, everything is smooth. The most important thing is to write down everything that you would um, imagine that could happen on set and the uh, points of, of conflict that could happen or points of misunderstanding and make sure you have an action plan for all of those steps that you don't improvise on set. Just sit with your partner or a cup of coffee or tea and write down all those points. Oh, if this happens, we do this. If, uh, f if the footage is out of focus, we're gonna do this. If someone lost uh, the hard drive, we do this. If the actor is not coming <laughs> on set, we do this. If we do get in the argument, we do this. And so on. Do those things in the pre-production and then it will make the job on production and beyond much easier. What do you think, Rumki? So the most important thing is that the tasks are divided. Everyone has a job that they're in charge of doing and the other person doesn't interfere with that. And even if you do have some idea or suggestion, you have to be very careful and thoughtful how you're going to bring it up so, so your partner doesn't feel um, like you don't trust them or you don't trust the way they're doing their job. You think they're not capable of handling it themselves. So just focus, divide the tasks, and each of you focus on who's going to be doing what. Like you said, Constantine, it's important to organize all of those things in the pre-production process when it comes to films. But what else do you think is really important for couples to make a successful film together? Keep it simple. Be nice. Be nice, be nice, be nice. The words that you should repeat to yourself all the time because it's so easy to not be nice. You know, there's so many opportunities to not be nice. But, but if you are nice, then the whole world is changing and everyone is happy and satisfied because nobody wants to work with a person who is not nice, who is angry, who is irritable, who is always complaining about things. People want to work with the energetic people who are knowing what they're doing, who are passionate about what they're doing and who are there to help other people in order to make the project itself better. It's not a competition of egos. It's, it's a collaboration. It should be collaboration. There is no place for negativity on set or on any creative collaborative production. I would add to this that you have to promote somewhat this type of behavior of being nice you have to show by example that if you're nice that everything is better create a certain gatherings before you start the production or in pre-production always have a brief like a one to, to two minutes or five minutes or however you want to not too long announcement how, how do you want it to run smoothly and what do you expect from the project get everyone excited about the project get everyone passionate get everyone a role is and especially get your partner a clear role as Ruman has said earlier that they should be in charge of something yeah, and keep them there do not interfere and be nice so please be nice to your partner be nice in pre-production in production in post-production what else would you add Rumki? well i would add to leave relationship problems and emotions at home it's really, uh, you know, when you're making a film, there's no space uh, for you and your partner to now argue 
about some relationship problems or who didn't wash the dishes and who didn't take care of laundry. <laughs> you know, it's really, uh, you are there to make this film happen and this is your job and you have to leave all the problems that you're holding a grudge or you're not, you know, just leave them at home and focus on doing the job correctly and being there for your partner's creative endeavors. And then everything um, that needs to be discussed is for home. So you can discuss all problems or um, concerns that you have outside of the film set because really it's really hurting everyone uh, one person gets uh, holds a grudge or is angry about something and then uh, you know it makes the other person also angry and it may slows down the process for everyone and for the whole crew on set uh, and you have to be able to compromise and be a good listener and you won't always agree with your partner's ideas. For example, me and Constantine are both directors and we might have uh, completely different visions uh, for our films. But uh, if I'm working on Constantine's film, I know I have to have an understanding that that's his vision. It's not my vision. Uh, I could like give him advice. I could listen to uh, his concerns or... Uh, if he wants to pitch an idea, test an idea with me, I'm there for, uh, to listen to him, but I'm not there to interfere with his vision or change his mind or say to him, look, that, that, that sucks um, and stuff like that. Because we have totally different creative ideas and, you know, what, the time will come when I will direct my movie, when I will be in charge. But when your partner is doing their own movie, just be sure to be there for them to make that movie happen and just make the whole process smoother for them. Not there to, like Constantine said, to try to make it a sort of a competition um, and try to take over with your ideas. So compromise, listen to your partner, make it fun for each other. All right, now the juicy part. When the poop hits the fan, you have to be prepared for that. And one thing to remember that relationships are more important when you're making film with your partner. You don't want to break up or divorce because you didn't agree on one aspect of a film. Make sure you do the prep work. Make sure you do that prep work uh, in the beginning so the poop doesn't actually hit the fan. But when it does, always remember... The relationship are more important. You're going to stay with the partner for the rest of your life, hopefully. And the film, uh, you just make it there. You, you don't even have to release the film. You can throw it away. You can, you can waste, uh, you know, thousands of dollars of film uh, because it's just money. It's, it's not the relationship. Relationship are more important because it stays there. You can make another movie and, uh, and make it great or remake it. You cannot return relationship. You can always earn more money. You can always um, get more money for the film. But make sure that you are clear that you not have uh, emotional fights with each other um, about something that you did uh, that is not related to the movie at all. Make sure that you always prioritize relationship when you work with your partner. And in order to do that efficiently and effectively... As I said earlier, pre-plan that so the poop doesn't hit the fan ever. But if it does, then yes, you have to make a choice. What is more important, relationship or a movie? In some instances, it could be a movie. But Roman and I think that relationship are more important than the movie. Do you agree, Romki? <laughs> of course I agree, yes. I do think you have to prioritize your relationship. Things go wrong with the film, just let it go. You know, you can always make another one. It's not worth it to break up or go through a whole crisis uh, with your partner because something went wrong. Um, but really that requires a deep understanding from both parties. 
uh, not holding grudges and um, listening to each other's argument. I mean, arguments, listening to each other, really, like really expressing um, what went wrong, what could have been done better, and how can we improve next time, right? So I, I think that also with uh, any creative type of work, um, any anything that involves in creativity, it's really sometimes people take it way too seriously. I'm not saying that it's not a serious thing, but at the end of the day, you have to remember you are there and you're both creating art. So you have to try to make it a fun experience for each other. Make it a game almost. Make it almost like another date for each other. You know, you are there and you're making... A sto- you're telling a story and it's a wonderful experience when you get to experience that with your partner because then it doesn't become just the job it's really like oh we are engaged in this um creative activity together and we like ev- we can give each like we can bounce off ideas with each other um and really see the project kind of expand from the beginning to the end, you know, from just a few sentences on the paper to an actual film. So I think it's just a wonderful thing if you can really make it a fun experience for each other. Don't take it extremely seriously. Uh, And of course, it's going to have moments where, especially in pre-production and in production, where it will be stressful. It will be stressful probably for the both of you, but you always have to be mindful that at the end of the day, this is just a movie and we're making beautiful art come to life. And in the process, we are being good with each other, right? Yeah. So be good. Be good, make it fun, make it a beautiful game for you as a couple, and therefore your movie will succeed. And the final thing I would add to this conversation is don't forget to celebrate. Yes. 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 Celebration is very important. Celebrate. Celebrate. Because uh, when you make a movie, it's a hard work. It's a hard emotional, physical, and so on. It's really hard. And especially when you work with a partner, you have to make a, some some special celebration, some tradition. You have to create a tradition that allows you to celebrate the movie with a big bang, you know, to celebrate it well. So then when you're about to start to make a new movie or a new project, you're going to be excited to wait until it's completed so then you can celebrate it. You kind of almost trick yourself into uh, making more movies with your partner because the, your celebration is so great and you can't wait to make uh, can't wait to experience it so make sure that you celebrate and celebrate it well also one more thing i just want to add is that when you uh, and your partner are both creators are both filmmakers one thing to always make sure is to not make your whole relationship about films <laughs> You know, we tend to like watch a lot of films and we tend to watch a lot of TV shows and always discuss it. But you have to also bring some other fun things into the relationship. So it doesn't become like we're only talking about films and how was your day at set and all of that. You know, like you both, everyone has to have some other interest as well. And um, you do some other uh, things besides talking about your careers and uh, film and filmmaking. Although we love films and we we will always watch films and discuss films together. I mean, we're doing this podcast, but I think that it's very important to also bring in some other conversations <laughs> into your relationship. That's right. That's exactly yeah. what you should be doing. Yes. Now we finally arrived at our <laughs> obsession of the week category. What is your obsession of the week, Rumki? Well, my obsession of the week is the book Master and Margarita by the Russian author uh, Mikhail Bulgakov. (laughs) It's just brilliant. It's like a dark humor classic. It's really a classic. And Konstantin recommended it to me. I love Russian literature. I still don't speak Russian, which I should learn. But it's just great. It basically 
the devil comes one day in Moscow along with his black cat that drinks vodka and smokes cigars and a naked witch and just makes a full chaos around people's lives until, well, I still haven't gotten to that part, but that's what I read in the synopsis, until they meet Master and Margarita and they really try to help them fall in love. Is that the good summary Aww. of it, Constantine? <laughs> You've read it before. I don't know if I said it. I'm right. not gonna tell anything about it. I'm okay, gonna discuss okay. when you finish. <laughs> okay, I, I have to finish it. But so far, it's brilliant. I love it. It's really funny. Sometimes I laugh out loud when I read it. Yeah. That's that's how you know that the book is great. Mm-hmm. My obsession of the week is the graphic novel. Mm. Uh huh. The graphic novel Dune. Book two, what deep? I was waiting for this book for a year. You know, when the first one arrived, when approximately about um, the first Dune movie came uh, by Denis Villeneuve, and there's more to come. I read that, uh, and I was so amazed with the the artwork, the way it was designed, and just just in general the story. Because I already read the book by a friend Herbert before the the paperback. And I, yeah, and I watched a previous movie, but the graphic novel, there's something magical about this graphic novel, it just puts you in that world, lets you imagine, imagine yourself be in that world in a sense. And it's thanks to the great work by the artists who, who made this book. So I highly recommend to, to, to check it out, the first one, the second one. The third one, I think, going to be coming like next year. Uh, can't wait that one as well. All right, folks, this is the end of this episode. Thank you for tuning in. Make sure to listen to our podcast. And also, if you have any suggestions, you can always email us at hello at or DM us on Instagram. Thank you, guys. Bye. Bye-bye.